Welcome back to Let's Play The Ams Family! Last time around we rescued Pugsley from the games room, even though he didn't really want to be rescued in the first place. And today, we're quitting the game. Except we're not really. This is indeed a game over screen, but you can go into it at any time just by pressing start and then hitting select twice. You might well be thinking, what on earth is the point of doing that? Well the point, my friends, is over to the left here. More specifically, the point is four extra lives, which you get to take with you back into the main game. And here's the best thing about the game over screen. As long as you go into it via the start select method and not via the more traditional game overing method, you get to keep all your money and all your extra lives. And also, as you can see, your score will remain exactly as it was before you went into the game over screen. Plus, of course, the points you got for picking up the four extra lives. On top of all that, it's also an extremely handy shortcut. Because what it essentially allows you to do is eliminate any and all backtracking to the Hall of Stairs. This makes it a very useful trick for speedrunners in particular. There aren't that many speedruns of this game out there, but those that I have seen all use this trick to great effect. So as you can see we're in Granny's stove, which of course means that today we're going to be saving Cousin It! I wish. Sadly, Cousin It doesn't even make it into this game. I can kind of understand why Ocean chose to leave him out, I mean he's not what I would call a core family member. That's the core family members are Morticia, Gomez, Festa, Pugsley, Wednesday, and Granny, in case you were wondering. But it's not like Cousin It's role in the film was a minor, blink and you'll miss it, fan service cameo like Jubilees was in X-Men 1. He did have a role to play, and it did have a bearing on the story. It didn't have a great bearing on the story, but it did have a bearing on the story. Now, Granny Stove is another one of those transitional areas to get to a dungeon, but it does have a couple of its own features. The major one being that switch. You need to turn that switch off in order to get into the next dungeon. But a word of warning to the wise, if you go into this bonus area after you've hit the switch, please be aware that the switch will reset itself and you'll have to hit it again upon leaving the bonus area. First time I played through this game, I didn't know that. So what happened was this. I got it to Granny's stove, got up, hit the switch, went in the bonus area, didn't realise that the switch had reset everything, came back out, went down to the bottom of the furnace expecting to be able to enter it, and the blocks were still there. Need to say, I was more than a little pissed. And when I say I was pissed okay, I don't mean that I was drunk. Please don't go defaming my character, I could do that perfectly well myself, thank you very much. So before we uh, go in the dungeon, I just want to give a quick shout out to my favourite enemy in the entire game, these mad chefs. Who swing meat cleavers and for some reason can also multiply infinitely from the floor. They're not particularly tough to deal with, because one good jump attack will just take care of them. But their sprite animation is so goddamn goofy looking, you just can't help but love them! So now we've found the minute to our third dungeon, the furnace. Although I suppose it could also be called the stove, because we did access it via the stove. And things hint here kind of just tells us what we already knew. It is indeed Granny that we're going to be saving today. Because you know, Granny's stove wasn't big enough of a hint. But the second part of his hint is it's a bit more cryptic. He mentions baddies that are too hot to touch. What could he possibly be referring to? Well, what he's referring to is the major gimmick of this dungeon. In the past, there have been enemies populating the levels, and to remove them, you just have to jump on their heads. Unless, of course, they happen to be spiked, like the bugs in the conservatory, or that goddamn tree in Deja Vu, and the less said about that evil bastard, the better. But that's not the case here. As you can see, every enemy and every hazard is on fire in some way. And if Gomez touches fire, he gets burned. There's also an additional gimmick uh, with these switches. Much like in the conservatory, you have to press switches in order to remove obstacles blocking your way. However, this time some of the switches are what I call trick switches. This one with a fire rotating around it is real, but the one in the middle of the level is a fake. And if you hit that, you'll actually put a barrier in your path as opposed to removing it from your path. So you have to be careful which switches you which switches you elect to press. But if you've never played this game before, just follow what I do here in this video and you should be fine. Because I know which switches are real and which ones you don't want to touch with a 10 foot pole. And already the game is throwing some rather annoying rooms at us and we're only two rooms into the dungeon. This cannot bode well for the overall difficulty. And the thing about that block lift, if you jump on it, 
and you get hit while you're standing on top of it, you'll phase right through the goddamn floor and fall all the way down to the bottom again. And to add to the annoyance of that block lift, if you don't give yourself enough momentum when you jump off it, you'll also fall right back down to the bottom. Mind you, I can't complain too much. I mean, for the past couple of videos, I've been saying that this game is too easy. Now, suddenly, Ocean ramp up the difficulty level by quite a bit, it has to be said. And suddenly I'm complaining it's too hard. I can't have my cake and eat it too. That's just not fair to the developers. So we're now in an area which I think has got an hilarious title. I know the oven doesn't sound that funny, but bear with me here. Grandma is a witch, and we have to rescue her from inside an oven. In other words, Gomez is pulling a reverse Hansel and Gretel, and to me that's just hilarious. Unlike this block lift, which is anything but hilarious. You have to jump on it just as it's coming out of the lava, and that can be really, really tricky to time. Now you might have noticed that I've been taking the previous rooms at quite a pace. Because that's the way you usually get through this dungeon without taking too much damage. But here in the oven, you want to do exactly the opposite. You have to be really, really careful with your movements and jumps. In other words, you have to go slow. And you have a heart here that's rather ingeniously hidden behind a false wall. But unfortunately, due to my completely terrible playing abilities, I just went that completely obsolete by taking two hits. In fact, I actually ended up worse than I started out. Way to go me. Now here, you want to take the top path because the obstacles on the bottom path are harder to avoid and you can just drop down to the bottom path anyway. And if you do that, you can then go through this false wall, which is quite a nice little secret if you know about it. And then, you're at the end of the oven. And what the hell, let's get that dollar for the hell of it. But not the one at the top, that can just float there for all eternity. Now you might have noticed that I've actually taken quite a bit of damage getting to this point. But you've also probably noticed that I'm not particularly worried by that fact. And that's because, providing you know where it is, there is a chance in this room to actually recover all the damage you've taken. The trick is knowing how to get to it. You need to find this invisible platform, jump on it, and then collect this Fezcopter. Once you have the Fezcopter, you then need to travel all the way back from where you've just came. And before you all groan at me, yes, I know, backtracking on camera is not good. But bear with me, okay? It'll be worth it. So once you've got the fez, fly up here and you can find three heart refills and eight dollars. And this first half of the dungeon is actually quite forgiving. Provided you know where the hearts are, you can actually recover just about all the damage that you take. So you don't have to do a perfect run for the first half of the dungeon, which is useful. The second half of the dungeon, not so much, but we'll come to that in a few minutes. And there's a second secret here, just pass through this false wall, and you won't actually come to an entirely new room, you'll just come to a different part of the same room. And it has another heart refill. And again, incompetent playing renders that obsolete, because I just lost the heart that I just collected. But really, for all that I've been rabbiting on, the first half of this dungeon isn't really that bad. The second half is where things get a lot trickier, however, beginning with these block lifts. The trick to navigating these successfully is to jump on the first one that's coming out of the lava, then as that drops down into the lava, jump on the second, then the third, and then you're home and dry. Now because we haven't talked much about her, let's talk a little bit about Granny Adams, shall we? Granny Adams, or as she's sometimes known as, Grandmama or Grandma Frump, to give her name from Charles Adams' 1930s cartoon strip, she was played in the TV series by the brilliantly named Blossom Rock. And then in the first movie by Judith Milliner, and then for some reason she was replaced by Carol Kane for Adam's Family Values. Granny is perhaps the only witch in the main cast, although rather amusingly, she doesn't actually consider herself to be a witch. This leads to a rather funny moment in the TV series where one of the Adam's Family neighbours says they've seen a witch on the roof of their house. Granny's response is to say that she was up there yesterday and didn't see any witch. Not realising, of course, that she's actually the witch that they're referring to. Granny is also actually part French, although you wouldn't know it by looking at her. You might know it by looking at her daughter, Morticia, because she certainly has a more continental look to her than her mother. A lot of people seem to think that Granny Adams is supposed to be Festa and Gomez's mother, but she's not. She's Morticia's mother and she always has been. And now we come to the bastard child of the hop. 
And I call it that because that goddamn rotating block lift is back. And once again, if you don't give yourself enough full momentum, you will fail that jump, and this time you'll fall right into a pit of lava. Which for some reason is not instant kill. In fact, I've heard there's a lot of lava pits in this dungeon, none of it kills you instantly, it just damages you for one heart like every other hazard in this game. In fact, I could be wrong saying this, but I don't actually recall there ever being any instant kill hazards in this game, which is a very big rarity for a platformer of its time. I do remember once I got crushed between a wall and a moving platform, had more than one heart left and it still killed me instantly, but I think that was down to a glitch, so I'm not really counting that. So now we're in the River of Lava, which is a Fezcopter flying segment, and it's nothing too difficult. We have these fireballs to avoid, but providing you don't go full pelt into them, they're not too hard to dodge. Then we have these rotating eyeballs, which are even easier, you just follow them round the direction they're going. And if you're wondering what these extra fezzes are doing floating around here, they're actually to, there to symbolise checkpoints, because if you were to die on the River of Lava, and if you did, you were a rubbish player, because you shouldn't really get, take too many hits at all here, for having said that, I just took one, for no apparent reason. But if you were to die, you could instantly grab the first copter and you could continue. If the first copters weren't there, you'd just fall to your death in the lava and you could never complete the game. Which would not be good game design on Ocean's part. And while you still have the first copter, take full advantage of it by hitting that switch and then flying as far as you can over to the right. Switches are actually the main gimmick of this uh, room, of why it's called barbecued and the main gimmick of switches, I have no idea. I'll just let Mr. Flame and Watch drop down over there harmlessly. As I said, switches are the main gimmick, in particular this switch, which will actually make a bridge allowing you to get to the other half of this room. Although, you will probably take at least one hit doing so, which doesn't matter too much. As long as you don't take, say, two or three hits, you'll be fine. Jump over another Flame and Watch. Now this bit's awesome. You get to use the switch to trap these two flaming guys. Except I'm incompetent, it didn't work. Let's try it again. There we go, but now I've freed up the balls of plasma. But that's not too bad because the flaming guys are a lot harder to avoid than the plasma here, so it's all good. Finally, we come to the last oven, and as the name might suggest to you, the last oven is indeed our final room before the boss. And much like previous final rooms in dungeons, it combines a lot of the hazards we've seen previously, like the fire jets and the balls of plasma. It's nothing too difficult to get past, although, having said that, I'm taking hits like it's going out of fashion, and I'm in real danger of dying here, and I would quite like to get through this place without dying once. Although, if you're playing this game for the first time, that's going to be an impossible feat, given all the hazards and some of their placement. And one last fact about Granny, although it's more of a related fact than about her herself, there was never actually a Grandfather Adams in the TV series or any of the related media. And I think the reason for this is that there was actually a rival show about a similar family of, shall we call them, monsters living in a house, called The Monsters. And that show had a vampire grandfather in it, and I'm just wondering if perhaps the makers of the Adams Family uh, TV series thought that putting the grandfather in would A, create too many Adams Family characters, and B, be too much of a comparison to The Monsters. There is a grandfather Adams, he's just never seen on screen. But enough with the prattling, it's time for a boss fight! So our boss this time is called the Fire Dragon, and wait a minute, Volvagia? What the hell are you doing here, buddy? Okay, intentional misrecognizing of the boss aside, this guy is a piece of piss. Because all he'll do is rise out of one of the two lava pools in the center of the room and shoot fireballs. But the fireballs should never ever hit you, providing you're ducking all the time. Uh, his body is spiked, but providing you bounce on his head early enough, you'll never land on his spikes. And he'll always come out of the same pattern of lava pools in every game. So if you play this game as many times as I have, he is just so goddamn easy. And now we've rescued Granny, who turns out to be just as ungrateful as the rest of her goddamn family. Oh, you were getting very comfortable, were you? How about I just leave you in this oven to burn? I mean, it's no goddamn wonder Pugsy and Wednesday were so rude to me when they got you to set them a terrible example. So that's the end of that dungeon. Uh-oh. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. And I think I'm kind of in trouble here now, because... The dragon is dead, and Granny has been rescued. But the boss music is still playing, and the doors are still there. Are we trapped? Have I been trapped myself forever? No, of course not. I'm just messing with all your heads. 
you can just go through the wall. But I just wanted to show that glitch off, because it is kind of funny. And that does it for our third dungeon, the Furnace. Except it actually doesn't, because there's a couple of things I didn't get to show off in the main run. So before we finish for today, let's take a look at them, shall we? So the first secret that I missed out on was actually all the way back in the very first room of this dungeon. The more sharp iron amongst you will have noticed that any time you hit this bank of switches, one block is left behind, and you're supposed to use that block as a stepping stone of sorts in order to get back to the very top of this room. As you can see, the wall over to the right here has now been removed, and we can go to the room it was guarding, which is the Red Hot Maze. Which, as the name suggests, is a maze, and contains a lot of red hot fiery things, hence Red Hot Maze. Now the Red Hot Maze contains a lot of items, some are obvious, some are a bit more hidden. As you can see, we have money here and a heart refill, but there's also three extra lives for you to seek out and collect. And you get to laugh at more of my incompetent playing here, I didn't work out that you could actually just walk right using the block lift to get through this small gap. Instead I tried to jump through it and it took me five or six tries. But getting through this small gap allows you to gain access to a one-up. And also this wall. Now this wall is very important. So remember its location because we'll be coming back to it later on. And I momentarily got lost here and forgot where I was supposed to go. You were supposed to go, I don't know, three stories down. There's like four stories to this maze. This is the third story, the second story from the bottom. And that fireball jumps higher than any other in the game for no apparent reason. So hit that switch, and as we all know by now, switches remove barriers blocking our path. So I think you can see what we're supposed to do here. We're supposed to go back to where that lift was, where the barrier will now be removed, and we can go to where it was guarding. Make your way over to the right here, and negotiate your way across these two tricky balls of plasma. And also, be aware that this lift will not actually crush you as long as you're pressing down. It will crush you if you're not ducking, but otherwise you'll be fine. As you can see, the area where the one-up is is now blocked off, but we can now access this weird figure of eight block lift. And there are two secrets to grab here. One is obvious, it's the heart refill in the top left hand corner, and one is not at all obvious. Once you've got the heart, go back onto this figure of eight block lift, which unfortunately takes a lifetime to get back to where it's supposed to be. Good god. Try not to slip into a coma, then take a massive leap of faith over to the right here, get past this ball of plasma, and you'll be rewarded with a heart refill, a dollar, Tennis shoes, invisibility, and a 1-up. And there's another 1-up over here. Then just go down to the bottom and you'll emerge midway through the grill. The second secret that I missed involves the Fezcopter. Grab it from the River of Lava, then head back into the previous room and fly up to the top of the room, past these two fire jets, and you'll gain access to a fair amount of money, two hearts, and an invincibility. Now the reason that I didn't go for this during my main run is that the journey up to this little bonus area will always take three hearts off your life bar. And I had three hearts on my life bar when I got to the River of Lava. So I would have died showing off that secret. And I didn't want to do that. And also, this secret isn't particularly that good. If you can buy it with the training shoes, you can absolutely plow through this level. For the first 10 to 15 seconds anyway, and then your invincibility runs out. And besides, the River of Lava isn't exactly the hardest place to get through normally anyway. Our third and final secret is over here in the oven. This time you don't want to press the switch at the very end of the room. This will allow you to jump above where the barrier is through a shortcut which takes you all the way through to the last oven. Which means that you can complete this dungeon in under 5 minutes. And on that bombshell, that's going to do it for this video. Join me next time for among other things my favourite member of the Adams family and perhaps my favourite boss fight in the entire game. Until then, TTFN.